What we're going to look at today is something that's referred to as a model of the open economy. There's a lot of parts to the open economy. We have the domestic, we have the foreign, and sometimes we have interference through various governments. What we're going to look at is the basic model of how all of these things tie together. And there's a lot going on. In fact, the way I want to kind of describe this is that we're going to be looking at two different markets with a bridge. Something that connects those two markets on either side of, if you want to think about it this way, of a river. And there's going to be this bridge that allows these two markets to interact with each other. The first market we're going to look at is the market for loanable funds. Now, the market for loanable funds domestically is simply savings equal investment. But when we bring in the foreign component, there's something else that's going on here. The supply of loanable funds domestically always comes from savers. And so in that sense, supply is always going to still be the savers. But the demand for loanable funds, the demand for money, basically, to access or to purchase investment materials comes not only from domestic sources, but also from international sources. So the one side of our equal sign is going to be supply or savers. The demand side, the investment side, is going to have now two parts. There's investment, which is domestic, and there's net capital outflow, which represents the foreign part of investment. And if we draw out our graph for the loanable funds market, we can see that more clearly. We have the interest rate on the y-axis. We have the quantity on the x-axis. We have our upward sloping supply curve, which is for the savers. And we have our downward sloping demand curve, which is investment plus net capital outflow. Now remember, net capital outflow can be positive or negative depending upon the um, activities of foreign uh, investors. So the first market is the market for loanable funds. The second market is the market for foreign exchange. In this market, what we're looking at is the need to acquire a domestic currency in order to buy products made by a particular country. So this would be the um, demand and supply of US dollars for people who want to acquire goods made in the United States. The supply is basically the net capital outflow curve. It is the availability of the financial asset currency. The demand in this market comes from people who want to buy physical goods and services, so that's the net export line. So in this case, supply is equivalent to net capital outflow, and demand is equivalent to the net exports. And where the two lines intersect, we have a price, which is called the real exchange rate. Now the reason this curve, the supply curve, is straight up straight up and down is because that amount is fixed. It's not a continually um, changing number because we're not continually adding new dollars to the markets for foreign exchange. It's set by the Fed. So now we have our two markets, the market for loanable funds and the market for foreign exchange, and now we need to connect the two. Our bridge is built by the one thing that's common between those two markets. In the market for loanable funds, we have supply equals demand, or savings equals investment plus net capital outflow. In the market for foreign exchange, we have net exports equals net capital outflow. So the one thing that's the same between those two markets is our net capital outflow number. That's the connection, and that's what's going to form the foundation for our bridge. The key determinant for the net capital outflow number is the interest rate. And the interest rate is inversely related to the amount of net capital outflow. At higher interest rates, net capital outflow falls, meaning foreigners are buying more domestic assets. And so when we draw this curve out, it looks an awful lot like a demand curve, where we have an inverse relationship between price and the amounts that people want. That's our bridge. And now we can put this whole model together to form the model of the open economy. We're going to start here with the market for loanable funds, and we're going to find where demand and supply are equal to each other, or if we want to say it this way, where savings and investment are equal to each other, and find the interest rate. We're going to take that, that interest rate that we've found and take it over to our net capital outflow line, where that interest rate intersects with the line for net capital outflow, that's going to set 
the quantity of net capital outflow, and we're going to drop down to our market for foreign exchange, and now we have set the quantity of net capital outflow. So we have that vertical supply curve, and wherever the demand curve intersects with that, we have our real exchange rate. This is the equilibrium in the market. So the interest rate from the loanable funds market sets the amount of net capital outflow, which helps to determine the foreign exchange rate. Where things get complicated is if one of if something in one of these markets changes, well that's going to affect the other market and it can easily affect the position of our uh, of our bridge. The process we want to go through as we try to figure out how the how a change would affect this big model is the first step would be to find which market is affected. Then we find which curve is affected, which direction does that curve move, and then finally what's the new equilibrium in that market, and consequently the new equilibrium in the other market. So let's say we have a situation where there is a budget surplus. If there's a government budget surplus, that's going to affect the loanable funds market. Remember, a government budget surplus is the equivalent of having an increase in the amount of public savings. If it's going to increase public savings, that means it's going to shift the supply curve to the right. Now, shifting that supply curve to the right lowers the market interest rate. So we go over to the net capital outflow line, find where that new interest rate hits the net capital outflow line, and that's going to give us the new quantity of net capital outflow, so we drop that down into our exchange rate market. The demand curve hasn't changed, so now all we have to do is find where that new supply curve hits the old demand curve to find our real exchange rate. So as a result of a government budget surplus, we see interest rates fall in the loanable funds market, and we see the exchange rate fall as well as a result of shifting the net capital outflow curve. There are other things that can affect these markets. Obviously, anything that's going to interfere with trade, anything that's going to interfere with the ability of people to save money, whether it's public or private, whether it's something that affects the uh, demand decisions, whether it's domestic or foreign, so the stability of a country comes into play. There's lots of things that can affect these. This is just one example of that. And um, it does, getting a grasp on this open economy does take a lot of practice. There's a lot of moving parts. But if you take it slowly and follow your model, you're going to be able to catch on to this and be able to predict things with a fair degree of accuracy.